You might be able to see behind me some of that movement. There have been trucks and cars going through that crossing point behind me for the past 10 minutes or so, 40 or 50 of them, just a small fraction of the amount that are going to cross over today for the first time in five months. More than 800 people from South Korean companies are going to be crossing over to restart some of the operations there. Um, but I should say also there are negotiators crossing over with them because the negotiations that led to this reopening haven't really been concluded yet. There are still some details to be worked out. And so at the moment, South Korean officials are calling this a trial run. That's right. As you say, it simply is a trial. And it took several sets of uh, talks between the two sides to reach uh, to this day. But is there a sense that it's still on shaky ground, the permanent reopening of the complex? I think there's a great willingness on both sides to reopen it. You mentioned the rounds of negotiations. There are seven of them, some of them pretty tense by all accounts. Um, but yet they stuck with it and they've got to this point today. So I think there is a great willingness on both sides to make it work. But I think South Korea has been pushing for some changes, particularly trying to attract foreign companies who already have a presence in the South to open factories in Gaesong as a way to try and stabilize the complex in the future. And one of the negotiations negotiations taking place today is going to concern the use of internet and mobile phones inside that complex, which of course lies inside North Korea, where the internet and external phones are, are banned. It's going to try and work out a deal whereby they can be used inside the complex, and, and that's seen as a way of trying to attract more foreign investment. That's right, Lucy. And indeed, there's, there's a lot riding on both sides. But many say, actually, a lot more riding for the North on this because Kaesong is uh, incredibly important in terms of revenue going into Pyongyang. That's right. An estimated $80 million goes to Pyongyang in hard currency, in U.S. currency, as a result of its workers, 53,000 workers inside this complex. It's good for the South, too. I mean, it's good for Southern companies because it does give them that cheap, well-educated, Korean-speaking labor force, very disciplined labor force. Um, but as I say, the South Korean government does want some changes. That The main value to the South Korean government of this complex is that it's, in a, it's an inter-Korean project. It's a sign of cooperation. It, it's a link between the two, the only real remaining link between the two Koreas. So it's important for that reason for the South Korean government. And I think they've been very keen to try and ensure that no, no suspension of this kind ever happens again.